This is a classic interview question. They'll say, what do you understand when I say dry versus wet when it comes to writing code? And you better be on the ball here because it's a very important concept in terms of code maintainability and in terms of writing the code in the first place and getting it right. So what do we have first? Well, we have wet first. Let's say we have three variables, a, b, and c, one, two, three. And then we want to print the additions of two of those. So print a plus b and print b plus c. Now, if you've programmed for a while, you'll know this is wrong in a way, although we all still kind of do it. We've repeated the word print twice there. That's what wet stands for. Write everything twice. Dry, on the other hand, we would split these functions out. We would say function add, and we would have function print to screen. Now, if I was going to print things out, I would say print to screen, add A and B, print to screen, add B and C. Ah, but most beginners at this point say, that's not right, because you are repeating code. You're writing everything twice again, and you've added extra functions into the mix. But I'm gonna ask you a question. What do you do when the magical function name print changes? So let's say you have 100, 200 print statements in your application and it changes to print line. What do you have to do now? You have to go through the entire thing and change it absolutely everywhere. That's why we use the dry principle or at least one of the reasons. The next reason is how do you unit test code? So I have an input, I have an output, and I test that block of code every time I run through my test sequence. If you have print everywhere, you won't be able to run a unit test on the print functionality because it's everywhere. And the final point surrounds, can this actually work in a team? As in, if I just have prints littered about all my code, and then a team member is assigned the job of logging or debugging or something like that, and they're just inundated with all of these prints, it makes their job really, really difficult if they want to change something. And that includes yourself. In the future version of yourself, when you come back to look at your code and change something, you are gonna have the same issue. So that's why we do what looks like more work, but in the end is substantially less work, about four times less work if you don't have to change code everywhere. Not to mention, if you are changing that many code calls, there are going to be issues, right? So one code call from a previous version of the software might do one thing. The new version of the software might do it slightly differently, and now each situation is different. And of course, you could fix that by having a unit test, so you'd know if the new version is compatible or not, but you can't have a unit test if you are programming the wet way. So I hope that helps with your interview question. If you're a beginner programmer, then you're probably a bit daunted facing a landscape of hundreds of languages and frameworks. What you need, even more than programming knowledge, is clarity around your learning journey. You need a map. A map that shows you what technical and non-technical skills are required as an employee, freelancer, or entrepreneur. And that's where my free guide comes in, Zero Dev to Hero Dev. It outlines top-level skills you need to become an employee, freelancer, entrepreneur, or any mixture of the three. If you want a map to success, then this guide is what you're looking for. Get it for free at imdev.net forward slash hero.